Hello ladies, this is Debbie Wills. Um, welcome to the Bible study this week. We are studying Mark 11, 1 through 33. Before we begin, let's pray. O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be ever pleasing to you, O Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We are now in Passion Week, just days before Jesus is to be betrayed, abandoned, arrested, tried, crucified, and dies, then being raised from the grave to beat sin, death, and the devil. At this point, Jesus is on his climb towards Calvary. He is riding triumphant into Jerusalem through the eastern gate. He curses the fruitless fig tree, drives out money changers, has a faith prayer conversation with his disciples regarding a withering fig tree, and it is Hithor, and his authority is challenged all throughout the book of Mark 11. So now, the, sta say, the stage is set. So let us begin. Day 1. The Passover lamb is present. The lamb of Judah has arrived. Jesus is nearing Jerusalem, and he sends out two of his disciples to get a donkey, the colt of a donkey that has never been ridden. Anyone who's ever been on a horse or a donkey that has not been ridden is not a pleasant ride. But we have our own little miracle that goes on here because Jesus rides it with no problem. So the disciples bring it back and we have this beautiful reminder from Zechariah. Rejoice greatly, daughters of Zion. Shout in triumph, daughters of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. He is righteous and endowed with salvation. Humble and mounted on a donkey, even a colt, the foal of a donkey. Wow. So Jesus is fulfilling one of the prophecies written in the Old Testament. The disciples place their cloaks on the back of the donkey, and Jesus gets on. And as he rides up, the pilgrims heading to Jerusalem for Passover lay their cloaks and palm branches on the roadway, and they cry out, Hosanna, which means save now. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Blessed is the, king, the coming kingdom of the, our father David. From Mark 11. From Matthew 21, Hosea to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. From Luke 19, blessed is the king, the one who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory to God in the highest. Does this remind you of the angel song before the shepherds when Jesus was born? Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those whom he is pleased. Luke 2, 14. Sorry, phone. So, Jesus is now entering Jerusalem, and he comes in, and somebody says within the crowd, Who is this? And the crowd replies, This is Jesus the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Mark 21, 10 and 11. Jesus has en will enter Temple Mount three times in Mark 11. The Passover lamb is present, Jesus, and the Passover lambs are also presented for Passover. The Lion of Judah has made his entrance. And Jesus returns to Bethany. Day 2. Jesus curses the fig tree and enters the Gentile court of the temple. Let us go back before we go forward. When Jesus was 12, he and his family journeyed to, De to Jerusalem for Passover. When it was finished, his parents left, but did not realize he wasn't with them. When they do, they search for him for three days until they find him in the temple. And they say, Son, why have you treated us so? Behold, your father and I have been searching with great distress. 
And Jesus replies, Why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my Father's house? Luke 2, 48, 49. So why did I bring this up? Well, the temple is personal to Jesus. He is the son of the house. And now we see the line of Judah roar as he goes through and he flips over the, the tables with the money changers and he knocks over the chairs of those selling doves and he clears out the court, which is the court of the Gentiles, where the Gentiles come to pray. Why is this important? Well, it's kind of hard to keep your focus on God when you hear conversations and money rattling and animals making noises and no place to really stand and no place to really worship God Almighty. And so Jesus has taken offense with this. And so he comes up and he says, my house will be called a house of prayer. That comes from Isaiah 56, 7. But you have made it a den of robbers. Jeremiah 7, 11. These I bring to my holy mountain and give them joy in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be accepted on the altar, for my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations. Guess what, ladies, Gentiles are invited. We are part of the temple. We not, may not have access to the interior, but we are part. God has already made this plan, and Jesus is laying it out. After the court is cleared out, people come to Jesus to be healed. The blind, the limp, the lame, the sick come to be healed. And the chief priest and the scribes sit in awe. They are in wonder at what's going on here. Jesus is on full display right here in Jerusalem. And in the background you hear, Hosanna to the son of David. The scribes and the Pharisees, the chief priests, are indignant. They do not like this. And so they say to Jesus, Do you hear what these children are saying? And Jesus responds to them, using scripture, Yes. Have you never read from the mouth of infants and nursing babies, you have prepared praise for yourself. Psalms 8, 2. And he left them, went out of the city to Bethany, where he spent the night. So this is now his second day. The stage is set, and Jesus is no longer avoiding Jerusalem. He is full tilt, right in there, just roaring out his message. He's healing. He's allowing, he's not telling anybody to be quiet, he's allowing them to speak boldly. And that this is his final roar as the Lion of Judah before his death. And he does make quite a statement, but he's not finished. We still have day three. On day three, they pass the fig tree that is wilted, and Jesus finds his authority challenged. So they pass in the morning, they pass the same fig tree and leave it to Peter to notice that the fig tree is wilted to its very roots. <clears throat> and so he speaks up and, Rabbi, have you seen the tree you've cursed? Uh, it's all wilted. And so Jesus responds, have faith in God. Truly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt, in his heart, but believes that what he has said will come to pass, it will, it will be done for him. Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have it, have received it, and it will be yours. Powerful words. This is found in Mark 11, 20 through 26. Note something amazing about this. They, they're struggling with what he's done but yet at the very same time they're wanting answers and he gives them 
faith in God, pray in faith, do not doubt, and it will come to pass. We see them later begin to act on this. Just look into the book of Acts, and you'll see it in practice among the apostles. So Jesus is back in Jerusalem. He walks into the temple, and guess who's there? The chief priest and the scribes and the elders, they come to him. And their question is a loaded one. By what authority do you do these things? And who gave you this authority? Okay, before we move forward, I want to go back again to John 3. Now there was a man, a Pharisee, named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus at night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you have come from God as a teacher, for no one can do these signs that you have done unless God is with you. That's from John 3, 1 and 2. Okay, so they do know where his authority comes from. And they do know that the signs and wonders he does is, is ordained by God. They know this in private, but in public is a different story. So this plays out in Jesus asking them a question. Was the baptism of John from heaven or from men? Okay, now the scribes and the elders and the chief priests they're all huddled together and they're negotiating how they're going to respond well, I think we already kind of know they're not going to respond like Nicodemus did in John 3 so they kind of weigh this over and they know if they say that John was a prophet then Jesus can come back and say well why didn't you believe and they say that John was not, that he was from men, the people were going to be upset. And they were afraid of that because they believed John was a prophet. So they said, we do not know. So Jesus, in response, says, neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. Wham! There comes the Lion of Judah again, roaring back with an answer that really is no answer because he's heard the conversation with Nicodemus. He knows what they think in private because Nicodemus has shared it with, with him. And who knows how many others may have. This is pretty powerful stuff. But let's come back to who is Jesus' authority? Well, let's go to Matthew 28. But the eleven disciples proceeded to Galilee, to a mountain which Jesus had designated. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some were doubtful. All right, let's go back to that withering fig tree again, where Jesus said, Faith in God, pray in faith, do not doubt. What you ask, you will receive. And they're still doubting. This is after Jesus' death and his resurrection. They are seeing him, and yet they still have doubts. And Jesus responds with this, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Who gave him this authority? The Father. The Father who sent him gave him this authority. Because Jesus came to bear witness to the truth. Because Jesus is the truth. So we don't have to go far. Right here, he resides. We are now the temple, mobile. He resides within us. And now we get to bear witness to the truth. What an amazing thing that is. We have a Savior that at times can be so gentle and other times he can be just like the lion of Judah where he roars in and he just really takes his authority to a whole new level and that's the amazing part because that's how he meets each and every one of us each and every day 
perhaps I challenge you that when you read God's Word, that you look at it through the lens of faith, seeing what He's doing in all of this, but also seeing what He is doing with us today. This happened over 2,000 years ago, but yet it is still so relevant today. So I challenge you with prayer. Pray in faith. Pray for your family members who don't know Jesus. Pray for yourself in the areas where you doubt and you feel challenged and you just don't know which way to turn. Pray in faith for your brothers and sisters in faith, for the challenges and the struggles they may have. Take it to the one who can answer it. Take it to the one who can carry it. Because we can't. He already has. So it's not about what Jesus will do. It's about what Jesus has done. And he has gone to the cross and risen from the dead so that all of us have hope and assurance in eternal life with him. Salvation is done and it's the gift that keeps on giving. Thank you and God bless.